Okay, hey guys. We are going to take some bits and pieces today and experiment and play with them and try to create an interesting piece of art that the rest of my family and maybe some of you are going to go, I don't get it. But that's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> so Canvas Corp has um, this new line they're going to be coming out with, I don't think at the time of filming this, which is the beginning of February, that it's out yet. Um, the designer's name is Sandra and their relics and architectures. I will try to remember to link her um, page in the description below. She was in the CHA booth um, when I was there in Phoenix and she gave us all some bits and pieces to play with. This is one of the ones I got and these are kids building blocks. And then Seven Gypsies um, line in Canvas Corp. Um, they own Seven Gypsies. They have this new line called Architectures. This is one of their new pieces. It's called a mixed media paper board. It's literally a board covered with mixed media paper, which is strange and interesting. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm not sure why you would cover a, board, cover a board with paper and not just use gesso or something. I don't know, but I haven't played with it yet. Obviously, it's still in the plastic. So we are going to... <coughs> I'm still sick. I'm sorry, guys. There might be some coughing involved. Um, I haven't played with it yet, so we're going to do that <coughs> and see what we think of it. Um, I'm going to try to save the label because the label, most of your architecture um, pieces, most of the stuff in the line has interesting stuff on the labels as well as, you know, the product itself. So I've, you know, most of us who have been playing with this stuff have been saving these because these are just as interesting. So I'm going to do that and put it in my little box over here, which is getting kind of full. Now this is covered with paper and can you all see that it seems like the paper is like only glued down on the edges that it's not glued down like right here which I think if that's true, that's something that we're going to use to our advantage because I do have an idea. So I'm going to get out my water bottle because I, although I've been home for a while, um, I've been sick, as I said, and like nothing has water in it. So this does. I'm going to use this spray bottle. I'm going to just get this paper really, really, really wet. Really, we just want to soak it. And I want to try to rip it back from the board underneath. Which is totally, I'm not sure. I don't think that's probably what they intended for you to do with it when they made it, but I'm going to put a little hole in the bit in the middle, hopefully. There we go. I need my opening. There we go. All right. There we go. So I just want to hold it's big enough that I can rip because I really want it to be ripped instead of cut. And I'm seeing now that the board underneath is a really thick, super thick piece of chipboard. I'll give you a close-up in just a second. I'm going to want to be able to put these under here. Okay. So we're going to leave that just sit for a minute. I'm going to turn it this way. Oh, I was going to give you... So if you look inside, it's just really thick... Like super thick piece of chipboard. All right, we're gonna cover that so I don't cut myself. I have a box from my prescription delivery that just came. Um, I use an online pharmacy, and I want to use it. I'm just like really weak and tired. This cold flu thing that's going around, you guys don't get it if you can help it, because it really just kicks your ass. All right. So I'm going to cut a couple of decent sized pieces of this box. Let's see. This piece might work. And 
this piece might work. Okay, we're gonna need a pencil. Just grab one of these. And I wanna draw a wing shape. Just a loose sketch of a wing shape. And then, oh, we might need to get this wet. It might rip easier for one thing. I really want things to be torn and distressed. Now you might need to like do this. I want there to be sort of feathery shapes. And then like tear and distress the edges so that you know it doesn't it's not so obvious that you cut it. A big mess. That's all right. This is one of those little Tim Holtz distressing tools. And I want to really, like I said, get it wet. I want to crinkle it, wrinkle it, distress it. I don't want it to be anywhere near perfect. Okay, now the trick is going to be doing another one. <laughs> All right, so once you're happy with the one, do another one. They don't have to be identical twins, but maybe just sisters. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to um, do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm going to place my um, resin piece from Relics and Artifacts in and my two blocks that I want to be in here. I'm just I'm not gluing anything down not yet. All right. And then I'm going to like rip another little hole up here. because I'm going to want to layer that in like that. And we're going to do one over here. Now this is mixed media paper, so um, it's not going to, if you're going to do something like this, it's not going to rip super easy. Uh, by the same token, it seems to be fairly good quality paper, so if you're going to paint on it or layer things on it, it seems to, um, be a kind of paper that would hold it very well. Okay, so we're going to get everything glued down and then let it dry. What kind of glue are we going to use? Um, hmm, that's a really good question. I think I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use a gel medium. This is Indigo Blue's Super Thick Slap It On, and I think I'm going to use this. I may put a little bit of E6000 under the piece of resin or goop glue. Uh, the goop glue is closer and handier, so I think that we'll do that first. Because this, Why? Because this piece is heavy. <clears throat> heavier than the other ones. So I just want to make sure it's going to stay there. So I'm going to put a couple drops of this on the back and then stick it back underneath here. And then I'm going to put some of the super thick slap it on. Let's see. You know, <laughs> I can never find a tool the tool I'm looking for when I need it. Uh, there it is. Found it. This one. So I can get in the cracks. Alright. So I'm going to open up my paper here and just literally slap a bunch of this on here. And then I'm going to put my little wood piece. Get that off of the underneath of the nose so it doesn't look like he has a booger. That wouldn't be attractive. Okay. And then put this one down here. Baby wipe. Now, one thing I don't want to do is glue the paper to the face and the blocks too much uh, because I'm going to want to get in here to paint and put gesso and that sort of thing. I don't mind the little globs of um, super thick because. Um, we will be painting and adding texture and, and they'll just add to the piece. But I do want to get these main elements glued down. So I'm going and I'm going to put these cardboard pieces in, these little wing things in. Now gel medium notoriously, you know, takes a little while to dry. So I just totally put that on the wrong. No, I didn't. I am still sick. I get confused easy. Okay, I'm going to wrinkle these up a bit more. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to leave it just like that and let it dry. Again, I'm trying not too much to stick the paper down over the face, although I am going to want it to stick there a little bit at some point, but we're going to do that later. Um, for right now, I just want the main elements to be stuck down. Then we're going to gesso it. Then we'll adjust our ripped paper folds to be sculptural and probably do some more gel medium gluing, and then we'll do some painting. All right, so those are our steps. We're going to let everything dry right now, and I'll be back. Okay, we've got some gesso. It's not quite dry, but it's kind of dry. 
kind as good, right? <laughs> I'm going to get the gesso open. Hold on. There we go. <clears throat> so the reason I'm gessoing it, gesso is like a primer, and I want all the different surfaces of this piece to take the paint or ink or sprays or whatever I end up doing to it in a similar fashion in in the same way. I want them to all be equally as absorbent or not. And with all these different kinds of materials some of them are going to react um, more in a more absorbent manner than others and so I want to put them more on an equal ground. That being said I'm not going to get, you know, crazy with it and try to <clears throat> make sure everything's, you know, perfectly covered. I also don't want the little kids playing blocks to be too blue or red, their original. I want to cover up most of their original color. I'm also going to sort of messily brush it on some of the cardboard, although on the cardboard I'm not as concerned about having no none of that show. I don't mind if some of the cardboard shows through. And I'll probably have to do, you know, a couple of coats, and that's fine. And I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to be too concerned if, like, on the wings, on the cardboard wings, if, you know, it's just no more than that, um, or if some of the paper doesn't have it on there. Mostly I want these pieces inside to have gesso, so. That's where I'm going to focus my energies. So we're going to get, let this first layer dry and then we'll come back with a second layer or third or fourth. Mm -hmm. 